Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Eric. And this is Layla. And I'm Brennan. Welcome to our home in Mississippi. Come, Come on, on in. in. Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles. Come on in. I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. I'm Eric Kegler. And I'm Brennan Hovel. And welcome to our house in Jackson, Mississippi. So the house was built in 1952 was actually one of the first houses built in Northeast Jackson. Um, it's lot number one. This was a wooded rural area back in 1952. We were lot number one. The house was originally built by Betty Love and Jack McClarty. It was actually called the Tulip House and was actually the party house of Northside Drive. Um, and now this is really kind of where it used to be a more rural forested area, now we're kind of the central part of Jackson sort of residential area. And we're actually the only the second owners of the house. One of the great things about this neighborhood, when we moved in, um, we were the first people to become second owners in this neighborhood. All of the houses were still owned by the original owners that were adjacent to us, which was kind of cool. So our house is 4,000 square feet and um, it is a ranch. Um, Actually, we um, bought the house 10 years ago, um, and there's an interesting story. We actually got an offer on our house, which was down the street, and we immediately were like, we need another home. So we had driven by the house, and Brennan was like, we should go look at that house. It had a for sale sign in the yard, but like it had been sort of sitting vacant for years. Um, so we asked our realtor, she gave us the code to the house, and we snuck into the home, um, thinking that we had come to an estate sale here, which we had not. Um, <laughs> no, we had not. We had never been in this house. Um, because it had been vacant for about four years. There was a tree that had fallen through one of the back areas of the house. The entire house was covered in mold. Um, in Mississippi, we have Yazoo clay here, which causes the foundations to shift and there was a nine inch drop within a 10 foot span in the foundation of the house. So you could really roll a bowling ball um, down from one side of the house to the other. But my husband walked in this house and we came into this room and saw the huge fireplace, which we love. But then as he was walking through the house, Brennan started to tear up and he said, this house is so full of love, he said, it's amazing, like you can feel it in this house. And the truth was and he Eric was right. And Eric looked at me like I was insane. I did. Because it stunk so bad in here. <laughs> He's like, how can you feel love in this disaster? But um, we knew this was a project we wanted to take on. And we did. So, and so our, we talked to our realtor. Our realtor said that there had been multiple offers on the house and Betty Love, the owner, um, had rejected all the offers, and she suggested that Eric write her a letter about why we loved the house and what our intention was with the house. So Betty Love was really terrified that the house was gonna get torn down. Um, so I wrote her a letter and kindly told her what Brent and I did for a living, we were designers, and that we really wanted to bring the house back to its original grandeur. So Betty Love invited us to tea, 
and we had tea with Betty Love and sat, and she actually gave us her party book of all the parties she had thrown in the house with a list of all the guests and how much she spent. We um, later learned that the house was like the party house in the 50s, 60s, and 70s in Jackson, Mississippi. Charity events were thrown here. Um, it was it was the hobnob spot in Jackson. But Betty Love um, gave us all of that, gave us all the renovation blueprints and everything, and um, sold us the house. And it was, um, and the, actually we've met all the children. Betty Love has come to the house. Um, like, she and, loves most of what she's, we've done. She hates the front doors. Yeah, she did not like the double front doors. <laughs> that was her one comment was, I'm not, I wasn't hot on the, but she loved everything else we did. Betty Love also told us um, that she moved out of the house because her and her husband, her husband had surgery, he could not return to the home. And she looked at Brent and I and she said, this house was never meant to be lived in alone. She actually never slept one night alone in this house. Um, the day he was trans transported to the hospital, she did not sleep in the house that night and never slept here again, which was kind of cool. So we feel like we, have a lineage to carry in the house. And so as we've worked on the house and done our own renovation projects on the house, it has really been always our goal to maintain that original energy that Brennan found in the house and to keep continuing that on as we kind of work on the house to fill it with love and community and friends. And, and it has really kind of... Um, the best part of this house is being able to entertain in it. Welcome to our foyer. Um, this is the place where we welcome all of our guests. And we recently had this piece of art commissioned um, by Rosie Ferguson, who is kind of a friend of the family. It is a portrait of Julie Andrews, but it's more than a portrait of Julie Andrews. It really is one of the things that is most important to us in our lives. We love Broadway shows. We love New York City. And so we asked Rosie to put Julie Andrews in the middle of Times Square um, with all of the marquees that had all of the different shows that we'd seen and shows that we love, things that are important to us. There's a portrait of our dog, Layla, that you'll, oh, which is, she's right here, <laughs> um, that's, that's in the painting. We're in the painting. And all of the relief flowers that she origamied are made from playbills and tickets and shows that we've seen. And if you see the side of the picture it is all of the um tops of the playbill and the theater that the show was at um what my husband doesn't want to tell you is the reason that it's julie andrews and says you are a few of my favorite things is during covid when we thought we were going to starve to death i made him lip sync to favorite things in our store so that we could sell product online this is what he's not <laughs> telling you and i think it worked we, we made it through um these sconces are also um, something we had commissioned. Tommy Mitchell, who is a um, metal floral sculptor, um, made these and we are completely in love with them. Um, the other thing that's great in this room is this bench that um, we had designed. Eric designed all the embroidery. It's kind of an influence from another thing that we love, Bergdorf Goodman. We love wandering the top floor of Bergdorf Goodman and just looking at all the home mm. stuff and being inspired. And this bench was an inspiration from there. The wallpaper in the foyer is from Tebow. It kind of runs through all of our hallways. It was a great way with that burled sort of look to it, but it's actually a vinyl. Um, so it was really cost effective, um, but it really kind of helped tie everything together and kept the warmth of the house that we found so important. That chair actually belonged to a woman that was supposed to have been on the Titanic. She was not on the Titanic because their dog was sick, and so she took the next boat, but that, you know. But I actually got the chair for free <laughs> from her estate because the family, um, my mother does estate planning for people, and when they were doing sort of the estate sale, the family, I was sort of buying a few things, and the family was like, I mean, just take the chair. It's fine. Well, later it sort of... They found the receipt for the chair and it was worth a little pretty penny. So I was very happy to have the chair actually. So I think it's the third time we've recovered it. Yeah, we love that chair. The next room we're going to take you in is our lobby. And we actually call it the lobby because when Brent and I were designing it 
and the pieces of furniture we ordered, we had a friend come over here and she was like, oh my God, it's like a lobby of the hotel. And so we kind of so like- So instead of a living room, we call it the lobby. We call it the lobby. So join us in the lobby. So welcome to our lobby. Um, we really worked on designing this room and created it off of an artist that I found actually working on an event. He, um, his name is Tommy Pruitt. He actually was diagnosed with early onset dementia. He was a doctor, his wife was an artist, and she actually got him to start drawing and painting um, to help his dementia stay at bay. So at the event, I just fell in love with his work. Um, and so I bought 10 of the pieces but really what was sort of special was he has since then passed away, but we have become friends with the wife. So these pieces are really, really special to me and to us. Um, but the room sort of began around those pieces of art, actually, as well as a piece of art that Brennan is in love with. It's a Jacques Nestle. Um, it was painted in Paris. Um, he supposedly studied with Picasso in the 20s, um, and it is just one of my very favorite pieces that we own in the house. We picked the paint color on the walls. It actually um, is from Backdrop. It's called Suntan. It really kind of helped to warm the space and bring the space together. And it's kind of the nicest golden beige color. It just was a really nice sort of backdrop for everything. Um, I fell in love with the fabric on these chairs. It is from Liberty of London and I, um, Really, when we found the fabric, this fabric, and there's a plaid fabric on the chaise bench, that when we found these two fabrics, they really sort of set the room and kind of set the whole tone for the fabrics in the room, which I love a textile. So that was kind of really important as we were sort of working on everything. Yeah, this is sort of like, I love amazing artists. It's kind of, and so um, there's actually, we call it the goiter. It actually is a Rhode Island designer that hand blows glass that I just fell in love with this piece. Um, it was just so amazing and her work was so beautiful. And this sculpture is actually an Asian artist that we found when we were in Paris. And I, again, like it was just sort of, I love the aesthetic of it coming from my background in dance, the curves and everything were really important. The bowls were actually, um, we found on our honeymoon. They're actually made from uh, like a volcanic ash that they turn into this clay and, and create these um, these bowls out of. The, um, the piece de resistance on the <laughs> center of the table is actually from Home Goods. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, but they are from Home Goods. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> the piece over here is actually from the outside of someone's mausoleum. It was a collected piece that I actually um, found at a junk shop, but I just sort of fell in love with it. And the column base that's underneath it was a piece that I got off of an estate sale that I just sort of, again, thought it was really kind of fascinating. And we have used it all over and I end up with people that want it, but I just can't get rid of it because I just think it's so beautifully done and it's kind of amazing. Our favorite spot in this room is our puzzle table. Um, we love doing Liberty Puzzles, which is a wood puzzle. Um, and when we designed this room, we really wanted to create this space that gave us the opportunity to hang out and do puzzles. It's one of the other great things that came out of COVID. We realized that we love doing a puzzle. Well, we have a fire today because it really froze yesterday. We generally do not use our fireplaces all that often. So, but it does work. It actually is the original fireplace to the house with the original stone. Um, this was one of the things that we did not change. We did not really change any aspect of the front of the entire house. We redid a little bit of work in the foyer and closed off a closet, but really we kept this entire space very quintessential to the original aspects of this house. We changed a little of the molding detail on the windows and the doors um, and did a little work. When we get to the family room, we did a little work in that area as far as just closets, but really this whole area of the house was really maintained from the original. So the mirror is actually, um, my mother works with estate planning and older people on their estates. And so what ends up happening in our life is I feel like Brennan and I 
are now the collectors of all of the things that our families are like, I have this incredible mirror and I don't know what to do with it anymore. And they're like, do you want it? So this was one of those moments of my mother saying like, I don't have a place for this, but I don't want it to get damaged. So it really kind of houses a beautiful space like on our mantle and has amazing, like all of the carving up top and everything is beautiful. So I'm happy. I'm happy to be a little storage unit for some members of our family. <laughs> and the food dogs were, um, yeah, I, Honestly, I think they were just something we found. Brett and I have a large love of like Asian things and sort of collectibles like bronze. There's a set of bronze like collectibles that are from um, Thailand and Vietnam over here that we um, sort of love. So I think this was kind of just some of the things that we found like through some of our travels and as we were sort of going through. Um, this bowl is actually um, from California and was a California artist that sort of created the bowl, but I actually thought the set of it looked sort of like congruous all together, which was really, really nice. We don't necessarily know the lineage of everything in the house. We just know that we like it. Yeah, it kind of is how we buy things, is that the love of the thing is kind of important. Um, and really like the love of like a great artist or somebody interesting that we find. So some of the pieces have stories around them of friends that we've collected from or artists that we've met and become friends with and other things just are really that we found them and just kind of fell in love with the way they looked. Um, and this room kind of reflects my love of beautiful upholstery. I love to kind of put a detail on a, on a skirt and a detail on a chair that kind of was really important as we were working on the space to kind of really work on the details of kind of how everything kind of came together. But again, also reflected a little bit, like I don't like things to feel like you can't go and sit in our house. So that was kind of really important to us. That was our lobby. The next place we're gonna move on to is our dining room. <laughs> <laughs> so you want the real story? Or do you want the, the, so, the story we used to tell people? So Brent and I <laughs> um, met, I, in, working in design have worked all over the country and i was working in dayton ohio um brent and i actually met and i'm from dayton ohio brent and i met actually on a hookup site <laughs> grinder to be specific <laughs> um a little plug for grinder uh but brent and i met and um and immediately sort of had a connection and just kind of our relationship developed very quickly and honestly we met in august and by october brennan had moved here and we a little crazy it was a little nuts but we um it, i had had a the design business but we have grown it since then and opened the store and done everything sort of together it was just kind of one of those things that was sort of kismet but what's really interesting is in my first career, I was a ballet dancer um, and I danced in Cincinnati, Ohio, and Brennan and I lived three blocks from each other in Cincinnati. Um, Thank God we didn't meet till we were in our 40s because we would have surely screwed it up if we'd met in our exactly. 20s. Exactly. So we like so we met later in life, but the truth is through our lives we have um, we have had clients that were friends with each other in Dayton. It is it's a very weird um, connection that we have had for most of our life but really just sort of met 12 years ago and got married 10 years ago and got married and renovated this house, bought the house and renovated it all at the same time. Actually within weeks <laughs> of getting married, buying the house, starting the renovations. <laughs> um, it was yeah, all the things they say you're not supposed to do. Buy a new car, get married, buy a new house. We did yeah, all We of did them. all of those things. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Welcome to our dining room. Um, this room houses some of our favorite things. Um, some are, of your favorite things. Some of things. my favorite things. Okay, some of my favorite things for sure. Um, I'm an avid collector of blue and white. Um, this wall houses a great collection of some of the platters and teapots and cash posts that I've collected over the years. Um, and Eric is a whiz at hanging collections of things on the wall. I think that's why I married him actually, because I had all these collections I needed someone to help me put them together. Oh my God, I was waiting to know the reason. <laughs> um, um, but it was important to us that, you know, sometimes when you're hanging platters and stuff, it was really important for me not to let things get flat. Sometimes it gets to be really flat. Um, so I found these ledges and all these pieces of acrylic to sort of help create the collection. So it ended up having more depth to it and a little more interest 
um, so that you could see all the different pieces like and it gave it some texture and interest off of this wallpaper which we kind of are obsessed with. We fell in love with this wallpaper. We were randomly walking down the street in Paris and walked past the Pierre Frey showroom and this wallpaper was hanging in the front window of the showroom and stopped dead in my tracks and I was like, we have got to go in and check this out. It's actually a mural and when we first saw it, it was not quite available in the United States yet, so we had to wait a little bit for it to be available in the United States. Um, and we love it on these walls. It really, you know, sets a great tone in our dining room. It really kind of is the hub of our house. I meditate in here every morning, and it is just the nicest space to actually, like, sit in and enjoy. It's so comforting and we love having friends over for dinner and it just creates the most um, just serene environment to sort of enjoy. And we love dishware. That would be my sort of first love is like dishes. So it also really kind of like helped with the mural to kind of bring all this together that we can do different selections of dishes on the table. And we did this glass top table, which I actually found this table at um, a Palm Beach sort of consignment store and fell in love with it. It is custom iron wheat stalks. And I packed this in the van <laughs> that I was driving at the time and drove it back from South Florida so that I could have this dining room table. And, and it has followed us through several houses just because I love this table. And we designed the chairs in these Manual Canavas velvet to kind of reflect um, the this chair. This chair is a perfect example of just creating detail um, with the fabrics. This loose stripe on the back and the loose back cushion with the cording um, is just a really interesting way to um, apply these two fabrics. Um, I don't necessarily call a dining room chair sexy, but I think these dining room chairs are probably the sexiest thing in our house. Besides me? Am I chop a liver? What do we got going on here? I don't know. These chairs are pretty good. So the rug is actually from a company called Jaipur. It um, It's a brand new rug. It is actually brand new, but it was kind of the find of the century that it, you know, there's always a color story when you're working on a house, like the story that kind of moves you through. And I would have never told you that the color story we ended up with was the color that finds its way through our whole house is a strange sort of tealish green color. But like bringing this rug in and the dining room chairs actually started bringing the whole house together in a way. Mm -hmm. Cause this was not one of the first rooms we worked on in the house. And so it kind of was interesting as we got to sort of a point in the journey we were like this color really sets the tone and this rug really brings all the colors of our house together in it which was really kind of a happy accident we could not do a house tour without pretty flowers that just is sort of the quintessential thing about us in our home is we like to entertain and bring people over the candlesticks are actually um <laughs> i have a client that likes to give things away to be honest with you and so she gives clothes away and she was giving Fendi bags, Fendi bags. our employees <laughs> get free Fendi bags so, and you know it's so in all honesty these candlesticks were a moment that we were in a cabin and she was like just get rid of those and I was like can I have them because and so really they were kind of you know I feel like they were sort of a, and they're amazing I mean the blue in them and the crystals are incredible and so yeah these were they were free. <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with free. There's nothing wrong with free. So as we go into the next room, which is our family room, you'll we will expose our dish closet, <laughs> which is so there's We have a horrible <laughs> addiction to, to to dishes in China and and um, our friends always give us a hard time because if we have them over for burgers, the table is completely set with yes. salad plates, chargers, dessert plates. Crystal, glassware, the whole nine yards. We love, we love the full presentation. Yeah, the two cabinets that are actually in the lobby actually house all of our napkins, napkin rings, like all the candles, like everything are kind of hidden away in there and kind of organized. So it is, um, no, we, we love to set a table. And um, one of the only reasons I did not set it today is just because I love how the table looks and it was gonna cover it up. The house is very keeping with the architectural style of the house which is very traditional.
but we try to infuse some modern, more updated, traditional into that traditional design. I am much more traditional than Eric. <laughs> I was about to say, like, <laughs> Eric, you are Eric very... would funk it up more than I would, but... Um... <laughs> so it is really a combination of the two of us. I will really say that Brenna and I will agree that um, I find that it's nice to embrace the architecture of a home, but my husband is much more traditional. I am much more eclectic and a little funky. So this house is a real combination of the two of us with a little more of the traditional aspects, but some definite um, eclecticism and things like that thrown in there just for good measure to kind of spice it up a little bit. So y'all, welcome to our family room. Also kind of in Mississippi, we call it a keeping room. Um, so we were kind of talking in the dining room about our setting of the table. So originally when we got the house, there was a closet on this side with sort of those old fashioned partition doors on it. And so Brent and I revamped this closet to actually be our dish closet and we had it all lined in felt. Um, but I will tell you, love a dish. So when Brenna and I actually got married, we had 89 guests at our wedding and we served everybody on China. That was kind of our goal. So we bought China through the years. My favorite set is sort of this set of Haviland China that comes in like three different colors. It's all hand painted. It is like one of my favorite sets that we own actually. I use it all the time. Um, but one of the things we, this is one of our most recent purchases is this Moda Hedda set that is um, got the most beautiful colors. It looks amazing on our dining room table. We love sort of seeing it there. And collections of chargers, like we have sort of over the years collected the chargers that sort of go with this setup. And we have kind of partitioned it in between as you can sort of see with all of these little foam pieces to kind of keep everything a little protected in here, but beautiful. Um, this actually is the dishware that came from that entire set that I bought for Brennan, which is just beautiful. But on top of that, we have um, just pretty stuff that we really like. So, I mean, again, there's everything from high end to sort of basic everyday dishes, but we just love to set a beautiful table. So this was a great way for us to kind of create this and design these beautiful like heart of pine doors that sort of create this sort of um, herringbone pattern on them. And we actually decided, designed the bar doors to actually match those. And so in the house, when we bought the house because we told you it was the party house on Northside Drive. There were five bars in this house and outside. A bar in this room, a bar in the master bedroom, a the bar in the kitchen, kitchen, a bar outside. outside. And there was one more bar in the gazebo. Yeah. Um, so we actually sort of funneled it down to one bar, but we actually designed all of this with all of our glassware and everything inside of it and really kind of designed the interior drawers to kind of hide all of our napkins or in this side and glasses, but we love um, beautiful glassware as well. So that was kind of where we stored it all. And these are actually napkins that we still have from our wedding, because if anybody needs a tip, like, don't over order your napkins for your wedding, you'll have them forever. And don't put the date on them either. Um, but this is also kind of where we put our pictures of Layla that we love. So this kind of, this house is a lot of things we love. Alcohol and our dog. <laughs> so I'm a vodka drinker. So I am vodka, soda, grapefruit juice, pretty much all the time. Eric, Eric is the adventurous one. I'm a little more adventurous. Right now I'm sort of a tequila person. I'm always a champagne person. Champagne is my go-to. Um, but right now I'm sort of having a little tequila moment, um, but I've just moved off of from a gin moment. So he wow, is, I sound is, like a booze <laughs> out. <laughs> his, his favorite cocktail is um, a cocktail called The Last Word, which you can probably realize Eric's always gonna get the last word in. But it is gin, char gin, chartreuse, um, champagne, and Luxardo. Luxardo, yeah. and so it's liquor. This actually is a nice backdrop for the rest of our family room, um, which really is a place that we hang out. The TV's in here. I think we bought the house because of this massive fireplace that I make. For sure. But it really kind of developed. Again, you know, it's 
it, it's kind of like the lobby. We sort of developed this room to have a great deal of seating in it. This tends to be the room that our friends kind of come to and we hover in and hang out in. Um, this was actually the first room that we decorated or did anything with. While the rest of the house was under construction, this room was visqueened off because it was the only spot that there wasn't drywall dust and construction workers and just absolute disaster. It was the only place that we could come. So this was the first room that we did in the house. And the, the sofa fabric was really the jumping off point for this room. It's a GP and J Baker fabric. It was a beautiful floral that I fell in love with. And as Brennan told you, I love a fabric. Um, and so, so does Layla, obviously. And so does Layla. She is in her happy moment laying in here in the heat. Um, but everything kind of developed off of this couch. And we actually created this couch to be a really good, like, watching TV couch, as well as this chair, which is sort of the chair I hang out and watch TV in all the time, um, which I love a little leopard print and this leopard velvet. It was kind of one of my favorites. It's tiger. tiger. It's tiger. Um, <laughs> like I said, we just buy what we like. We don't know what it is. <laughs> the color on the walls in here is actually painted in homage of my husband's love of blue and white. I told him that I would not have a house that was all blue, um, but we did paint this room Hague blue from Pharaoh and Ball, which is really one of my favorite colors and it really does sort of rich in the space. It's also one of our favorite paints. It is. Mm -hmm. Ferron ball paint is, is really, the flat Ferron ball paint creates a great depth when you use a dark color, so. Yeah, it is true. Um, but the fabrics in here just kind of got developed over just time, like really we sort of found things as we were sort of going. We kind of created a little pocket of furniture and then we kind of just kept developing layering and some of the fabrics in here are antique, like there's actually an antique textile that was sort of like from the 1800s that is sort of like a cut hand-stitched velvet and there's like a crazy quilt over there that I found in an antique store and just kind of fell in love with it. My grandmother was actually a quilter in Wisconsin, so I think on some level I just love the handwork of all of that. I think it's kind of amazing. Um, this room actually houses probably the some of our best blue and white um, in the cabinets on either side of the fireplace and then kind of scattered you saw around in the bar. Um, but some of our best pieces are in this room and kind of also helped to develop the original design of this room. So this room was part of the very first renovation that they did on the house. This house, prior to us owning it, had been through three different renovations. And this room was actually the garage. Um, and they put these brick floors down. And I think this renovation was done sometime in the mid 70s. We don't know that for sure, but they did put the brick floor down at that time. Um, I don't know if you noticed when we came into this room, you had to step down into this room. When we first looked at this house, you didn't have to step down to get into this room. Um, but we had to jack the foundation up to make the house as level as possible, which created a step down into this room. This is the only portion of the house that is on a slab. The rest of the house is on what they call a conventional foundation. So we have a crawl space under the rest of the house. I will tell you a cute story in the fact that Brennan and I, on one of our first dates, actually each bought one of those skulls that are on the fireplace. Um, and this was pre-realizing that we were gonna get married or do anything. So like those skulls were each in se our separate spaces until we sort of got together. So that is probably one of our like- For three and a half days until we, you know, <laughs> decided to, to join the skulls very, together. It was a very short lived, it was a very <laughs> short lived romance before it became like, oh, we're moving in together. But, you know, I think all of the objects in here, there's just some great stuff and great blue and whites. Like this is a piece that I found in Alaska that's like a fossil bone. Um, really like was just something cool that I found and sort of fell in love with. It's, but each of the things, I mean, some of it is like, there are pieces that my mother has brought for us from her travels. My mother is an avid traveler. So some of it comes with that. And a lot of it is just books we love and art that we love in this room. Um, the pieces that are on the fireplace that are above the fireplace were actually three pieces that Brent and I, um, originally found in Paris at an art flea market that we sort of fell in love with. 
Um, so probably of any of the things in here, those are kind of our most special things or the things that we sort of have collected together um, and have found together on trips. So the copper actually that we um, purchase, like we kind of have a huge collection of antique copper, both um, that we hide away in the kitchen drawers that we cook with, but this was sort of an extension of that that we sort of bought like through the years and actually um, have been gifted as Christmas presents like from our families. Um, the that, collection actually started with one. I had this idea when we first moved into the house, the fireplace is so big and there were these original wrought iron swing arm things that were in the fireplace. And I thought, oh, let's get a big copper pot and we will um, put water and potpourri in there and the whole house will smell amazing. Um, while this fireplace produces a lot of heat, it, the fire, it's so big that I couldn't even get the water to boil to <laughs> create any scent. So then it just became decorative. In a room this size to sort of create the seating arrangements that we created, I think some of the ideas that we used that were really helpful to kind of bring the space together and divide it apart a little bit was we kind of layered rugs on top of each other that helped give each space some identity while starting to then also bring them all kind of together. So I think the overlapping of the rugs and things really helped to kind of give some definition. And then we kind of decided to layer the furniture on top of it. I think some of the misconception of what people do when they're decorating in a larger space is um, trying to like create one seating area that houses people, everything. People oftentimes think that you know, all the furniture needs to face the TV or all the furniture needs to be focused around the fireplace. And we don't necessarily believe that that's true. If you create conversation areas and multiple conversation areas inside of a room, it allows you to enjoy the TV, enjoy the fireplace and create areas that you can gather with your friends and family. We have eight seats at our dining table. And so I think it was also really important for us to create an environment that you could seat the eight guests that were having dinner with you like in a room together. So one of the things in both the lobby and this room that were important was creating an environment that housed that many seats so that really it was always comfortable for us to like have guests that could move to different spaces was also one of the things that we always really wanted as we were working on a room. So this was our family room. So please follow us into the kitchen. So we're both interior designers and we work together. And um, it's, it, it becomes a fairly easy balance. Um, there's certain things that are really important to me and there's certain things that are really important to Eric. And I think that we somehow, I don't even know how this happens, but we somehow allow the other person's personality and creativity to come through. Um, Eric loves a pattern. Eric loves a crazy upholstery. Um, and I have come to embrace it. Like I would have, he, he does things I would have never thought to do with fabric and trim and upholstery details. Um, and I will really say, I think, and I will say this is over 12 years of a relationship. So to be clear, like this was not, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't always that not easy. always this easy. <laughs> um, but I do think that we've really come to a place where like if Brennan really vetoes something, like um, I'm clear, like this is not gonna happen. And I think there are things that we both find important. And I think we have grown in our marriage to really find a way to listen to each other and to compromise the things with each other. And so I think it's really created a really healthy environment of how we create in the house. Um, I will say also, my husband is an incredible gardener and does amazing yard work and if the, if Jackson hadn't frozen over two days ago, you would probably see more of our lovely yard. Um, so we've also sort of made it that like, I will work on a lot of the interior of the house and he will kind of like come and edit and give his opinion. And outside, we kind of do the same thing. It's like we kind of balance our relationship out to give each other some primary like skills of like decorating and design. Which and is perfect because Eric doesn't do outside. I do not, I don't like outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot here, except for today when it's below freezing. <laughs> yes. Welcome to our kitchen. Um, this was probably one of the biggest renovation projects that we 
took on in this house. Um, it was originally two rooms. The kitchen stopped. It was in this area, and the kitchen stopped about right here. There was one small octagon-shaped plant window in the kitchen, and this part of the room was an old 1950s Naughty Pine family room. Um, we knocked the entire back wall of the house off, um, had floor-to-ceiling windows put in, and did this 17-foot-long island. Um, one of the things that was kind of inspiring about creating this space was we found these antique lanterns, lights that were from an sh old ship. We found those in North Carolina. Um, completely fell in love with those and knew that they had to go in this space. And the other thing that really inspired us was the fact that you could not really see the beauty of our backyard in the original design of this kitchen. And really, I wanted to make sure, because I do most of the cooking in our life, I wanted to make sure that we could develop a space that really allowed me to sort of see the exterior and really view the backyard and enjoy sort of um, the experience of getting to cook and work and do things here. Um, while getting to sort of see what Brendan has worked so hard on in our backyard, which is really important. If you notice, this room is very white and bright and light. And the rest of the house has a lot more color in it. And we really wanted this room to be an extension of the outside. Um, so we wanted to allow the openness of the windows to all just kind of bring the outside in. And we didn't want a whole lot of distraction with dark, heavy colors that we've got in other parts of the house. We did, however, kind of want to layer and create the same texture. So we used actually two Philip Jeffrey wall coverings. We did one that's a wood veneer um, and silver on the ceiling um, that really kind of helped to develop the space. We actually have low ceilings in this house and we've done a few ceiling details to actually create more height. And then we actually used a grass cloth on the walls that really kind of, again, help to give a little bit of texture and interest because neither Brennan nor I are totally white kitchen people. Mm -hmm. So this was a great way to kind of develop that. The light fixtures really helped us work off of the hardware too, which we two-tone the metal on the hardware to kind of work off the light fixtures and also did this kind of more contemporary stainless steel backsplash sort of over the cooktop that kind of really all kind of helped to bring the space together. But one of the things that really became important as we were working on our kitchen was we each kind of wanted certain things. Brennan really wanted a workstation sink, which we really do love. This is a Krauss sink, and it is kind of one of the most ideal things that we have brought in the kitchen just in terms of throwing a dinner party and keeping things sort of hidden and tucked away. It's so functional. We whenever we work with clients and we're renovating a kitchen, we all, since we've lived with this sink, um, we highly recommend a big, deep work workstation kitchen because you can hide all kinds of dishes in there when you have company. And I actually wanted the French door ovens, um, which was sort of my thing because I just loved how they looked, but I will also say that what I never realized was how ergonomic it was to be able to open the doors and Thank God it's clean. Um, <laughs> Cleanish. <laughs> and, um, and not have to lean over to actually go into there. It really was kind of one of those things that I was like, I love it, but I love it even more now that it's sort of been done. Um, one of the things that we really did do um, as we were working on the kitchen was we did the island because we also knew that like, you know, whenever you have people over, they want to hang out with you. So we kind of created this space with a floor to ceiling window so that we would also have a place for guests to sit and enjoy themselves, but also to sort of work off of giving Brennan and I sort of a small breakfast area for us to enjoy ourselves. And we actually took the knotty pine that was from the den area and stripped it and actually created sort of um, our pantry and our TV area and this house is like, I love hot tea, and this house is all of Layla's treats and things. But it gave us a really nice space and also kind of, again, like took a part of the history of the home and adapted it for a space that was kind of important to us um, and upholstered the doors in this 
great Nina Campbell fabric with the Samuel and Sons trim that kind of made a little interest and brought a little of that um, tealish green element that we had sort of found was like the story of our house into here to kind of give it a little bit of a burst of color without being too distracting from the outside. The chair fabric we initially found is an Osborne and Little fabric that um, we fell in love with and had a ton of color in it. We actually ended up that this was, this antique bamboo table has sort of moved around our house all over the place into like guest rooms and things. And it really ended in the fact that one day we were sort of sitting here and we were like, why aren't we bringing this into our breakfast room? And it is just the most functional table, but at the same time really brings that sort of warmth in. It developed into the bar stools, which were also sort of a bamboo, and it kind of gave a little bit of a casual feel to this. Um, but it also helps to follow that same idea of bringing the outside in with a little more natural elements. Um, and just gives it a little bit of warmth inside of all of the, the bright and the white. And our kitchen is kind of narrow, so one of the things it also did was it allowed us to bring the two chairs in, and we actually have two stools that we kind of prop our feet on, but sometimes when we have friends over, they'll kind of pop on the stool and we'll all kind of hang out and eat a little dinner. So it's also kind of a nice way that we got four seats in here without it feeling overcrowded in this space. We would love to show you a few of our bedrooms next. So if you'll follow us down the hall, we will take you there. I became an interior designer by accident. Um, my house was on a Christmas tour. I lived in a historic district in Dayton, Ohio. And um, the owner of one of the big design firms in Dayton came through the house and offered me a job. And I told him I had no experience. And he said he would train me and teach me. And um, the second I went to work for him, I knew I was, that this was where I was supposed to be and have done design work ever since. And for me, I started out, um, I started dancing when I was about eight years old. I went to college and did my career as a classical ballet dancer. Um, as I was retiring in my late 20s, um, I needed some direction and I really loved textiles when I was a kid and enjoyed all that. My mom actually dabbled in design work. Um, and so I actually decided to go back to school and study design. And I got out of school and went to work for a firm on Palm Beach and really um, loved the process of doing all of it. I just loved every bit of being a designer. And so when I, um, I had a partner at the time, he got a job in Jackson and I decided to come here um, because my roots were Southern. And while he and I did not work out, I really enjoyed it here. And the Southern aesthetic and the design pull is so strong here with the community here. It really just has always captured me to sort of stay here and develop the relationships that we have with our clients here. Um, so it's kind of how I ended up 25 years ago moving to Jackson, but we love it here. And I met this one and moved to Jackson, not realizing that um, I think I was actually really born a Southerner, but didn't identify as a Southerner until I actually got here. Um, completely love it. It's such a great spot. You, um, When we tell people we're from Mississippi when we're traveling in other parts of the country, they just kind of look at us funny, And but it is such a great spot and such an incredible community of people. Welcome to what we call our girls' bedroom. We have a girls' bedroom and a boys' bedroom. I'm not sure how this history happened, but we have always in our houses had a girls' guest bedroom and a boys' guest bedroom, so here we are. This room, I, my favorite color is orange, um, and so this room really got developed over my love of orange, and I found this Clark and Clark wallpaper that is this um, geometric botanical with butterflies and snakes and um, dragonflies. It and... is kind of incredible and it had a matching velvet to it, which I kind of loved. Um, so this room kind of got inspired from that. And then I found the Andrew Martin glossy tangerine wallpaper for the ceiling. And that was kind of like the starting point for this entire space. Strangely enough, 
I had, this is a piece from my childhood. It is an Ethan Allen secretary. And I had had it faux finished ages ago in this sort of like orange color with a little bit of antiquing done to it. And so it kind of worked perfectly bringing it in the bedroom. We actually, the coloration worked great for bringing in our extra like dining room chair in here. So that has kind of been a really nice um, way to use our furniture so that we don't have just random furniture sitting around our house. Um, Guest rooms are always a great place to kind of house those extra dining chairs that you don't really have room for in your dining room. Um, the bedding really got created to kind of really give a backdrop to the wallpaper. So we um, found a great ticking that kind of developed the bed and just little pockets of color, but didn't want to be too distracting as you sort of came in the room from all of the different things in here and from the bed itself. And the bed is probably one of the more interesting pieces in the room. This was actually one of the very first pieces of furniture that Ralph Lauren designed. And being a traditionalist, Ralph Lauren is kind of one of my big design inspirations. Um, it's got a little wear and tear on it, but um, Eric fell in love with it in an auction and kept bidding and bidding and bidding and bidding. You, so it's going to be in our house forever. Yeah, you know that moment in an auction where somebody's bidding against you and you're just like, but I want it, but I want it. But I, I kind of hit that moment, not really paying attention to like how much I was wanting it, but it was... It was worth it, <laughs> it, was worth it. <laughs> but love the bed and it's kind of an amazing piece and um, really do love the story behind it because we both sort of have an affection for Ralph Lauren and the design aesthetic that comes with Ralph Lauren. So that was kind of a nice. It's nice to have own that little piece of that history. Yeah. I think when you're working with color and while we work on lots of different levels with lots of different clients and clients that um, want a more neutral palette and clients that are more colorful. I always think it's about the strength of color that you're sort of using and keeping it managed in the strength. So like really when I was working on this room, what was so great about the wallpaper was the deep navy blue in the wallpaper actually gave a huge rich tone that kind of balanced sort of that richer sort of very like bold color orange that we picked in here so i think a lot of times as you're working on rooms it's really about the balance you take of the color scheme you're making i think it's very easy to bring color into a room as long as you're keeping everything at the right levels together so that everything kind of reads as like it's all a five i think it actually kind of allows you to mix and play a little more in that color but i will also say that i think so much of it is about using colors that you love and that you look good in as well. So I think so much of like our design aesthetic comes from like, you know, your color tones and, and how you look in a room becomes very important to like what you should put in your own home. You know, it's like there are colors that we love, but I don't necessarily, neither of us look very good in. So I think it is the choice you make around how you place color in your home appropriately as well. So all of our bedrooms um, have their own ensuite. Um, it was one of the things that when we started the renovation of the house, we wanted to make sure that each bedroom had its own um, private bath, which is great for our guests and great for company. Um, so the bathroom in this bedroom was probably one of the biggest disasters during the renovation. <laughs> the um, contractor <laughs> fell completely through the floor into the crawl space. <laughs> Um, and one of his guys came running up to us like, oh my gosh, we have a huge problem. So um, just the perils of renovation. But out of that came this great space. That we um, kind of did a little more of a traditional sort of like cloth foot bathtub that again, we drove back from a trip to Ohio and found in sort of an antique shop, um, but really developed it to sort of have a little feel of um, a continuation of this bedroom we did an Andrew Martin grass cloth on the walls and the ceiling to kind of create some continuity and then really did this Samuel and Sons grow grain trim to kind of help define the space and cover up actually some of the mechanics of using a grass cloth and cutting it at the ceiling and the wall space um, the painting on the wall is actually really special to me when I danced, I was actually the first male Peter Pan to have the ballet created for me. 
and that piece was actually um, by the artist that created the backdrop of when Peter Pan takes the children to Never Never Land. This was one of the schematics that um, came across the back wall um, as we were flying. So he gave it to me as we were sort of creating the ballet and it is got a very special place in my heart, very much so. And we really in this bathroom wanted to do something a little more interesting than sconces on the wall. So we found these great Ralph Lauren fixtures um, that we found these floating shelves that we kind of put them on to just create a little more interest in here and something kind of special. And this is another example of how we kind of love to mix metals. Um, the silver lamps with the, the gold mirror, the silver hardware on the sink, um, gold hardware on the chest. Um, we think if done well, you, you can absolutely mix metals. I think people are oftentimes afraid of it, but we've done it in here, we did it in our kitchen, and I just think it kind of gives a layered, eclectic feel. I think the thing that gives a home a soul is the people that you invite inside. I think that the soul of the home comes from the friends and the family and the connections and the memories that are made in the house. It has nothing to do with the lamps or the art or the rug or any of those things. It's about the memories that you share with the people you love in the house. I agree. I think the soul of a home comes from what you put in it. And I don't mean like the furnishings. I mean, I think so much of what you create is the flow of how energy works in a home so that your family grows and your happiness grows and that your community grows there. I think it becomes what is so important. And I think it is, even in our own home, what was so important was that initial moment that Brennan was so moved by the energy in this house that I think it's the thing you capture and that you build on and I think so much of that has to do with the people that are there and the people that you invite into your life. So on the way to the primary is our powder bathroom, which was actually originally a laundry room, um, but we found this crazy paper from a company called Mind the Gap and just fell in love with it because it actually went with these upholstered deer mounts that are hanging above the toilet, which I was a little obsessed with. So we created this space to kind of be a little bit of a quirky sort of room. The antique tile behind the mirror helps to create some depth, as does the made goods mirror. Um, and I actually found the sink, which is petrified wood on eBay um, as we were working on the house. So this was kind of one of my little like inexpensive finds. And actually the soap dish is, um, from an old carriage, it used to be sort of where they put the lanterns in the antique carriages at the time. So it was kind of just a little quirky little thing along the way to our primary bedroom. So y'all come on in. Welcome to our primary bedroom. This space really reflects a little of what we were doing when we worked on the kitchen. We have a great view of our backyard out of the windows here. So we really wanted to develop a space that was A, both sort of restful for both of us and a little, a continuation of the outdoors. So the greens and the soft grays were really important for us to sort of develop in this room to kind of create a nice warm palette in here. And like probably most of what we do, most of what we do with our clients and most of what we've done in our house is we find a fabric that is kind of our jumping off point. Yes. Like the fabric on the, the sofa in the family room the fabric that kind of inspired this room was the fabric that is on the chair and on the window treatments in this room. It was... Lee Jofa. Yeah, we fell in love with it and um, it became the jumping off point for the entire room. And so in working on it, we kind of developed both, again, like how to soften everything to keep it so that all the fabric showed off and also to create a little texture in here. So we found this beautiful plaid carpet that we fell in love with that really kind of has that gray tone to it. Um, and it really kind of helped bring all of our furniture together as we were kind of working on it. Um, this sofa is my favorite story. I bought this sofa for $75 at the Salvation Army and had 
Uh, Not in this fabric. No, it's been upholstered <laughs> several times through the years. But I had, the, I had our upholsterer, who's amazing, cut the notch in it because Layla likes to get up on the bed. So this was a way for her to get up on the bed easier. Um, and covered it in this great um, Kravit fabric with this great Samuel & Sons bullion trim that is just kind of puddling all over the floor, which I love. This room has a lot of different patterns of fabric in it, which I think normally is a challenge for people. But I think one of, the, one of the ways to be able to introduce multiple patterns of fabric into one room is how you repeat them through the room. So we've taken like the edge trim on this chair is the same fabric that's on the pillows on the bed. The bed fabric is actually on the skirt of this piece over here, which actually hides all of our gym clothes and our t-shirts are all folded up underneath this. So that's kind of a nice little trick if you need extra storage because our closet in this house is not exactly humongous. So, um, and it also just kind of, we created the top for this piece. It brought the fabric, the floral over here. It really is about how you balance the pattern so that it, it kind of keeps the story going as you're walking through the house. Um, it also really helped Brent and I to kind of show off um, pieces that ba basically came from both of our histories together. These are pictures of me when I was younger and dancing, a piece we picked up on the street in New York, um, some black and whites that Brennan had when, like from his younger days in design. Um, strangely enough, this piece of art is one of our favorites because um, it is actually taken by one of my clients. In Eric's the, very first client. My very first client took this photo and Brennan bought it at an auction. At an auction, at a charity auction. I bought that photo probably five years before we met, mm -hmm. five or six years before we actually met or even knew anything about each other. Um, so it's just happy coincidence. But this we actually found, um, there's a great company in Birmingham, Alabama that actually sells um, both concrete pieces that are new, but this was sort of a student done antique piece that they had found in Europe. And so we had bought this and I just kind of love the curves and the shape of it. Um, looks amazing with these lamps um, from Visual Comfort. And again, the shades sort of pair perfectly with it, which kind of made me really happy. To I love walking in this room and sort of seeing this. It just sort of settles me, makes me really thrilled. And it also then moves really well into Brendan's Another collection. one of my collections is the finials that are on this um, mantle. These are all either stair parts or um, old finials from the ends of drapery rods. Um, and I've collected these just randomly over the years. They're, you know, a couple dollars here, a couple dollars there, but they make a great little collection. Um, and it really, so this is a hickory chair bed um, that is, we kind of worked on the bedding. Like, honestly, Brent and I like to keep things, as much as we love a layered bed, it's also important to keep things simple just so that the structure of the bed actually shows off. So we did a little Tebow trim, but kept everything really, again, like, pulled together some of the fabrics of the room so that this just became a participant and didn't become the lone structure in this room, which is really a large master bedroom. So we wanted to make sure that everything kind of worked to keep the room feeling sizable. Um, one of my favorite pieces actually is um, this piece of art that is an Ellen Langford piece. She's a Mississippi-based artist. Um, when I was first working in design in Mississippi, she and I shared studio space for like the first like six or seven years. And I, um, she and I traded off and she made me this piece and I call it Das Boat, but it just is one of the most restful and peaceful things. I love waking up to this every day. It is just one of my favorite pieces of art in our home. Home is this person. This person is my home. You're not supposed to cry on this. <laughs> not supposed to make me cry on this. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, for all of this, and I love our house, and for everything I tell you about safety and everything else, like, I love this person very much, and this is what creates my home, is our marriage and how hard we've worked on it, and 
that has really created both the enjoyment and the beauty of all of this. It really is what my home is. I 100% agree. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.